What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 35 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to make new encounter types. First, I'm going to show you how to edit the scripts to make a new type of terrain, and then I'm going to show you how to edit the scripts to add a new encounter on top of that terrain so we can run into Pokemon, say, in the desert. With that said, let's get into it. So, the very first thing you want to do is go into your scripts and open PB Terrain. Scroll down a bit and find PB Terrain. Now if you scroll up to the top of this, you'll see right here, there's all the terrains and then their tags, which are just a number. So ledge is tag one, grass is tag two. So we want to add a new one. I'm going to add one for a desert. So we're going to be making a desert sand tag or a type of terrain. So just underneath puddle, I'm going to type in desert and we're going to make desert tag number 17. So now, if any of our terrain has the tag 17, then it will be a desert tile. So, what you need to do next is make a function. I'm just going to copy the is ice function. Really what this does is it just returns the desert tag if the tag if the um, tile you're standing on is desert. So, basically all this means is like, it checks the tile you're standing on and say and says, is it desert? And then it returns it if it is. So that that's just useful for later. So make sure you do that. And then, then you're done making your terrain tag. The next thing is the important thing, which is the encounters. Which is in a script very close by, which is pfield underscore encounters. Boop. So now that we've made our terrain tag, what we need to do next is make it so that way encounters can happen on top of that terrain tag. So... Right here we have our, our long list of encounter types, you know, land, old rod, good rod, all that stuff. But we're going to make a new one, and we're going to call that desert. So desert, make sure I spell it right, equals 13. So we now have 13 types of encounters, with the last one being desert. So now what you need to do is start adding desert to all of the other tag lists. So for example, all the names of them, you want to do a comma, enter, and then quotes, desert. So that way now desert is the one at the end of this list. And you're also going to need to do that for enc type chances. So the way that this works is each number is a Pokemon and like the value is how common it will show up in your desert or in your encounter. So like, for example, this first one is land. So in land, you can plug in, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can find 12 Pokemon on land, where the first two show up at 20% of the time, and then the next four show up 10% of the time. And you want them all to add up to 100%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy... Let's copy this one, 730. I think that's Old Rod. Yeah, Old Rod. O Old Rod, you can only see two Pokemon. But the first one shows up 70% of the time, and the second one shows up 30% of the time. So, you can really make it as long as you want, as as long as it uh, adds up to 100% for all the Pokemon. So, let's just make it so in our desert, only two Pokemon can show up. And one of them happens 70% of the time, the other one shows up 30% of our time. But if we really wanted to, what we could do is make it so we can see 100%, we can see 100 different Pokemon, but they all show up 1% of the time. It's just possible to do that if you want. The next thing you need to do is the densities. To show like to make it how common that they appear so 25 density that's like the default density 25 density is um, land uh, well let's just make our sand in the desert 25 density as well so make sure you add that to the end of this list and then ink type compile dense to be honest I don't know exactly what this means what it does but I'm gonna be copying lands value comma one and there you go so now there's really only three other things that still need to be done and one of them is very easy because you're just copying actually no they're all very easy because you're just copying what's already been done and fixing it to be for yours so for example scroll down this function is cave i'm just gonna copy it paste it down here um, press the right keys and change it so that way now it is is desert and it will not be desert if the density is nil. Otherwise, it will return the encounter types of desert. This might not be necessary, but just for now, for safe for safety, we'll put that in. Now, the next things, 
the two big things are encounter type and is encounter possible here. We want encounter to be possible on our new terrain, and we want to be able to specify the encounter types. So, let's see exactly what you can do here is copy, paste, copying and pasting the is cave stuff again, but if is desert, return encounter types, desert. Ta-da! Now the next one is, is encounter possible here? So instead of copying cave, because the way that cave works is encounter is possible everywhere if you have a cave, but we want our desert to only have encounters be possible on our specific sand tiles. So what we need to do then is instead copy the is ice right here. So the way it works is if the tile the player is standing on is ice, return false. You cannot encounter there. But we want to do basically the opposite, where if the exact tile we're standing on is desert, so I'll change that, is desert, return true. So if the tile you're standing on is desert, return true. They also do it similarly below, is grass, where basically they get your player coordinates and then they check the terrain tag of your coordinates. And if that terrain tag is grass, then it returns true. So essentially, if you're standing in grass, you can have an encounter. If you're if if you're in a cave, the encounters happen everywhere. If you're standing on a desert tile, then yes, return true. You can have a uh, encounter there. So now that all of our script editing has been done, we've changed our encounter scripts and we've changed we've added our terrain tag. There are a few other things that still need to be done, but we're really close to being done. So what I've done is I've gone and modified the tile set a little bit. If you scroll down all the way, I added these sand tiles and I made them passable, but right now their terrain tag is still zero. And we want it to be the value of our new terrain tag that we made in our scripts, which is 17. So unfortunately, if you want to do that, you cannot do it in RPG Maker right here, because if you click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, it only goes up to seven and we want it to go up to 17. Fortunately, it still is possible to do that if you launch your game and you go into the terrain tag debug editor. So let's launch our game. And here we go, I can go into my desert. I added a sandstorm, which is pretty cool. It's actually pretty easy to do that too. If you just go into your metadata, you can then go down to the weather and then choose sandstorm. 100% of the time, so that's pretty cool. But what we want to do, let's not get off topic, even though I'm totally getting off topic, is we want to edit the terrain tags, which is right underneath metadata. So set terrain tags. It's loading, it detected the changes that I made. I want to load those changes, yes. And then I want to scroll down all the way to the bottom. But if you want to go down faster than just tapping down, you can press page down. So I'm just going to mash page down until I get to the bottom. I'm almost there. It takes a while, unfortunately, but once we're there, we're there. Cool. So now here are all of our desert tags. So you can press enter and then set it to 17. And you're gonna have to do that for all of these, but it's worth it. The effect of making your own desert is kind of cool. So we'll put up with the uh, frustration of single-handedly editing each and every one of these for the end result. We're almost there. Cool. Now all of them have been changed to 17, so we can save the changes, yes. And one thing that you need to do is to ensure that changes remain, you have to close and reopen RPG Maker XP. The reason they do that is because if I if I hit Control S and saved right now, it would overwrite the 17s that I just set. So I want to close this real quick. Hey, look, I'm looking at Reddit. Um, and then I need to reopen my game. Cool. So now if you go into the editor for your uh, terrain tags and stuff, scroll down, there won't be any numbers on these because they're using a number higher than RPG Maker displays. So if you successfully did all of this right, there should not be any numbers here, which means that they will be 17. You gotta, you gotta trust me on this. Those, those are 17 now. So cool. Now, 
all of these tiles for the sand that we've got here in our desert are 17, which means they're a desert tile, which means an encounter can happen on them. So now, for the final step in all of it, to wrap it all together, the desert magic is about to is about to all collide. Almost there. What we can do now is go into our game and then set encounters of this map, and then from the list we will now be able to select desert encounter, and then we will now be able to encounter desert Pokemon. So let's go to the map again. Let's go up to our set encounters for this map, a new encounter type, and let's make it a desert encounter. So we'll make it just Bulbasaurus for now. I mean, I, w I actually want it to be Trap Inch because I think that'd be cool. I just got to find him real quick. There he is. So let's make it so Trap Inch shows up 75% of the, I mean, 70% of the time. And um, Vibrava shows up 30% of the time. Almost there. There he is. And then he'll be level 20 when he shows up. Cool, so you can set the mins and maxes in this too, but there it is. So now, on our map, we have Trap Inches and Vibravas show up when you walk through the desert. And so far, it looks like it's working perfectly. There's our Trap Inch, and there's our Sandstorm. It's all working perfectly. One thing you'll notice is that there's grass on the ground, which is an issue with setting the battle backs. But I'll talk about that in the next episode. I can't run. Yeah, I'm going to talk about how to properly set up the battle backs dependent on your terrain, as well as if you want to just set it up so that way it's a blanket battle back for the entire map. But yeah, if I want this to be desert sand with a nice desert background, then there are a couple changes I need to make. But in general, setting up the encounters on our new tile works like a charm. So if you want to make new encounters on new tiles and properly do all that stuff, it's not that hard. Plus, if you really wanted to, let me close this. If you really wanted to, there's another easy way to do this. And what you could do is really just set all this sand tile to uh, terrain tag one, which is, no wait, terrain tag two, which is grass, I believe. Yeah, set it to terrain tag two for grass and just treat it the same as grass and set the encounters for grass. But it's not the exact same. Plus, if you want to have a map that has grass over here, and sand over here, and you want them to have different types of encounters, then the method that we just discussed in this video is what you're going to have to do. But if you want to make a map that just has only one type of encounter for the entire map, then you can be a little lazy if you so choose. But with that said, I hope this episode helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, hopefully I was clear and we now understand how to set up new encounter types. Yeah, it's not too tough. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for watching, you know, be sure to follow on YouTube and Twitter, as well as join the Thundaga Discord, and I guess Twitch also, I, I, how, did I, how did I not mention Twitch? I'm getting, I'm trying to get back into streaming more on that, but you know, I'm, I've been busy, busy boy. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you guys next time, and once again, I hope this helped you out. I'll see you there. Bye guys. Bye.